Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036361198 Father, we come before you this evening to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you adoration for your great faithfulness over our lives. We thank you for the journey message you granted us from our various locations, despite the difficulties of our roads, the insecurity all around. You assured us that safety is of the Lord. And here we are, standing in your presence in this place. Lord, accept our praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, we thank you for mobilizing our heart for this Theological Educators Congress. Thank you for what you want to do as you have turned your attention unto us. Holy Spirit, we ask that even as we begin tonight, we just want to tell you that we are here. We want to tell you that we have come. We want to tell you, oh God, that here we are. Please deal with us as thou seest me. Do something new, something deliberate, something eternal. Something indelible, something permanent with our lives, in our lives, and through our lives. Thank you this moment. And as we welcome your people, we ask that you yourself, you will be the one to usher us into your very presence. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 20. The Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you air from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifices. May he grant you according to your own heart and fulfill all your counsel. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord will fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord says he's anointed. You will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and they fall, but we are risen and we stand upright. Save, O Lord, and let the King hear us when we call. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening, just as a welcome church, we are not going to begin to particularly look at our theme yet. Our chairman, Professor Nilola, had already uh, helped us with that incisive welcome address and had captured what will be the agenda for this Congress by the grace of God. He had drawn emphasis 
He had looked at the context of the world in which we have been called to minister. He had looked at God who is our caller. And he had said we should consider our own lives. And then we ended by making a commitment. So I should have just said welcome, welcome, welcome. And ask you to go and rest knowing that you deserve it. However, I would like to draw some quick, uh, some quick charge so that we can pray together before we retire. Two things that I wish I could lay before you tonight. One, you will find in the book of Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, verse 31, and verse 32 will be the passage I'd like you to quickly refer to uh, very briefly as I uh, bring this opening charge this night. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Verse 31 and verse 32. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by sheep privately. This was in the context of Jesus and the disciples, his apostles, whom he had sent forth and engaged uh, with the work of ministry, said, let them go to all the places where he himself was to go. And he gave them how to cast out demons and all that happened. And the Bible said the people went everywhere and God was working with them. There was results in what they did. By the grace of God, they said, even demons are subject to us in your name. We cast out devils. We heal the sick. So they were coming back with jubilation as regards the ministry that they went to discharge uh, on behalf of their master. In another rendering of this same event, I suppose in the Matthew and in the Luke, I remember how Jesus Christ said to them, Rejoice not that demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your name has been written in the book of life. But whereas the different gospelers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, they captured that particular event and they reported it. I was particularly interested in the response in the response of the master Jesus particularly in Mark. And there are a few things that I thought I should highlight very quickly in those three Bible verses uh, for us as we gather 
for this third call 2018. The first thing I want you to note, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. I know that it will, it's okay that several of you, one way or the other, you could have your quiet time. You can have a time when you withdrew to be alone with God by yourself. And sometime, maybe you have taken a leave uh, from the uh, theological institution to go and refresh yourself or you travel or you did all of that. But this particular Bible verse was very particular. And what is the peculiarity there? And the apostles gathered themselves together. Is there any benefit in not just going to the, to the Lord Jesus one by one? Is there a benefit in a matter where John could have just come back and said, Lord, I went. And as I did like this, something happened. Is there a benefit for Peter to have gone alone and said, Lord, I have returned as you sent me. But what touched me was that they waited for each other to arrive. Don't forget that they did not go to the same place. They went in different directions. He sent them out two by two. Do you remember that? So when the Bible said, and the apostles gathered themselves together, the first thing I noted is that there was a deliberateness in gathering together. There was a deliberateness and I noticed that they were coming from different sides. Some arrived from this side, some arrived from that side, some arrived from that side and as they were all coming, I can imagine them greeting one, ah, welcome, how was it on your side? How is it going on in your own place? Ah, and the, and the other, Thomas said, even me, even me like this. Mm, demons! I saw one demon that catapulted. When I just said, get out in the name of Jesus. I thought it would not happen. And it happened. Even me. He must have been talking to Andrew. And Philip and Nathaniel, maybe they went together. And they have returned and said, what, how, what happened on your own side? I said, ah, thank God. God is good. So when everybody arrived, they did what? They gathered themselves together. That's the first point. Is there a reason why theological educators from different seminaries, different theological colleges, different Bible schools, is there a reason for us to gather together? Is there a benefit? Why do we need to gather together when we could have just been on our own? When everybody could have been biting his own thing in his own corner? When everybody could have just continued to say, Lord, as you have led us, that's what I'm doing. Is there a reason for us to have gathered together? I noted that. Number one, they gathered themselves together because they have a common cause. They have a common master. They have gone to execute a common commission. And they have faced a common problem. They have faced a common devil. And so there was a need to gather back together and compare notes and rub on each other and say, yes, what you thought was peculiar to you also happened to me. What you thought was your own personal challenge also faced us. And this is how we came through it. So while we welcome you 
to Theological Education Congress, I want you to know that they gathered themselves together. So this togetherness, we are going to eat together. We are going to sleep together. Some of us, we are going to share the same room together. You are going to meet people that you have not met before. And you are going to discover that what is happening in TCNM Bukuru is not different from what you are facing in, in, in our school in Donga or the one you are facing somewhere in Obinze. So as we gather together, I want you to note that togetherness. It is because the matter of theological education and raising men for God is a common challenge. And I want you to know that whatever you are going through in your sight, whatever is your challenges, you are not alone. And this is the rationale why God is saying, come together. And they gathered themselves together. But now, as you look at that Bible verse, you see the next matter. And the people, the apostles, gathered themselves together. Now, if the passage just stopped that they gathered themselves together, it could have been that they just, you know, they just decided to gather among themselves and they chat and they discuss and eat and just make a kind of, form a club and say, yes, we have also formed another club and we are just meeting. But I thank God that the scripture said, the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. Our gathering together has a focus, has a direction. We are gathered together unto who? Unto Jesus. For unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. May I quickly note that we have gathered together this weekend unto Jesus, our caller, our sender, the one that actually brought us into what we are doing and gave us a commission to be involved in raising men for him. We have gathered together unto Jesus. Now, what does that imply? Because we have not just gathered, thank God that they gathered themselves together, not unto themselves, but unto Jesus. So the first thing I don't want you to forget is that you have come unto Jesus. We have gathered together unto him who has called us, who has equipped us, who has sent us, unto him with whom we have to deal. Unto him who has appointed us. Unto him who has ordained us and given us this assignment. We have gathered together unto Jesus. So while you are settling into this meeting, I don't want you to forget unto whom have we gathered. We have not gathered unto a mountain that can be touched. We have not gathered unto a mountain that is quaking and shaking. We have not gathered unto a very big uh, tourist uh, place where you will have many things to do and get photographed and say, yes, I went to a place, I saw something. Sorry, you won't see anything here. Even if you want, by the time you take two, three photographs, you will discover that everything is bush. We are gathered together unto who? Unto Jesus. And I don't want you to forget that. Because we are not gathered unto men, let no man distract you. Let no man become your distraction. You didn't come to him. Thank God that we are gathered together. But the truth is that we are gathered together unto Jesus. So sometimes, why we gathered? Somebody's mannerism may want to distract you. Never you forget 
that it is not to that brother you came. You came to the Lord. Am I correct? And if it is to Jesus we have gathered, it is Jesus we must meet. It is Jesus we must encounter. It is Jesus we must hear. It is Jesus that we must touch. So I want you to determine that yes, we are gathered together because we are people of common destiny, common assignment, common challenges, common battles, common commission. Yet, we gather together. They gathered themselves together, but not to themselves. We have gathered unto the Lord. And because we have gathered unto the Lord, the Lord must remain your focus. The Lord must remain your expectation. The Lord must remain your, your desire. And so I would like you to note and say, Lord Jesus, it took me many hours to come to this boko. I must see you. I must encounter you. I must touch you. I will not go back without a direct encounter with him to whom we have gathered. And they gather themselves together unto who? Unto Jesus. Thank God that you have come to Peace House, but we have not come to Peace House. Where did we come to? We have come to Jesus. In the book of Hebrews it said, we have come unto a mountain that cannot be we have not come to a mountain that can be told, but we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. So why we will be speaking together, why we will be praying together, why we will be presenting papers, why we will be ruminating on issues and discussing, never you forget that it is not even the people that are presenting papers that we have come to. To whom have we come in this congress? To whom, sir? We have come to Jesus. So what should be my attitude? I must be listening to hear Jesus. I want to hear Jesus through every paper. I want to hear Jesus through every presentation. Because it's to him we have gathered. May the Lord bless you. Don't be distracted even with our feeble, inadequate facilities. I beg you, if to say you gathered here to enjoy better results, then that would have been the matter. You would have said they brought us here so that we can enjoy this place and we are not enjoying the place. Mosquito is just dealing with me. You could get offended. Don't be offended. Because it is not to sort things that we have gathered. To whom have we gathered? And Jesus to whom you have gathered has not yet disappointed you. Nobody ever comes to the Lord and he goes back empty handed. Nobody ever sought to meet Jesus and he goes just like that. The woman with the issue of blood determined in her heart, I must touch the hem of his garment. Do you remember? Many people were there. Thousands were thronging on Jesus here and there. But this woman said, I don't want to touch Peter. I don't want to touch Andrew. And I'm not going to touch Bartholomew. I just want to touch Jesus. When people are dancing here, dancing here, dancing here, others are chatting, others are saying, look at how this woman is, and look at how that one is. That woman said, well, I didn't come to discuss that. I did not come for analysis. I just want to talk Jesus. There were women like Mary Magdalene, like uh, Mary Salome, and so many of the women that were everywhere running, running around. And that woman said, I don't want to touch Magdalene. 
And I don't want to toss a lumi. And I'm not here to touch matter. I just want to touch Jesus. And because she was determined to touch Jesus, once there's a space, she brought her finger and grabbed the hem of his garment. And what happened immediately? The Bible said, immediately, the issue of blood that she has battled for 12 years stanched. And then suddenly Jesus said, what? Somebody touch me here. I said, Peter said, Master, what are you talking about? I can't say somebody touch you here. Look at many people that are thronging you here, pressing you here, falling on you here and there. How can you say anybody touch you? Say, ah. Jesus said, somebody touch me. Somebody has connected because virtue has gone out of me. There are people thronging here, pressing here and there, but they have not touched me. I'm not even aware they are around. Ah! It's painful that some crowd are there. Some have been traveling with Jesus. Can you imagine? From Capernaum to Jericho, from Jericho to Bethsaida, and they are now on their way to Jerusalem. And the master never knew. And their problem has not been solved. They are only just dancing around. But this woman came from behind with a singular focus. Since it is Jesus, I must touch him. And so when Jesus was not going to move, he said, somebody touch me. Then Peter, Andrew, Thomas, they started announcing, somebody touch Jesus, oh! He said, somebody touch him. Who is he that touched Jesus? He said, we are not going because somebody touched him. I would say, how does anybody touch Jesus when we are all here? You can be here this weekend with a pointed finger to touch Jesus. Issues that you have struggled with for years that nobody could help can finish here. Matters that you have spent so much money on, even as a theological educator, that you can only be crying in your room about. There's nobody to talk with. That matter can finish in this meeting. And as soon as she touched the master, the whole thing just finished. And when she came out, she said, sir, I'm the one who touched you. I'm the one who touched you. And this is the reason. I have had this terrible issue of blood. I couldn't talk to people. I spent all my living. Doctors have dealt with me. I have traveled everywhere. But when I learned that you are around, I decided that I must touch even if it is the hem of your garment. I never expected that you will even know that I came. I never expected that you will bring me to the limelight. I just thought I could do this secretly and see whether I can collect virtue from you. And immediately, the matter finished. I am the one. And the master looked at him and said, yes, yes. Go home. Be of good courage. Everything is finished. You will hear Jesus declare your complete deliverance. You will see Jesus speak to your need personally. Because that is why we have gathered. And they gather themselves together unto Jesus. And as soon as that woman, I think, you know, for me, she came, she touched the hem of his garment, she got her own healing, and she went. There are people that she met there and left there. Why? They were just around. They were just around. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming in a team. But don't be distracted. You travel together to see Jesus. Now you have arrived. Can you tell your friend and say, Brother, 
where we have come, it is to see him. I must see him. Don't distract me with your discussion. I must see him. This journey to Boko, this tortuous journey, must not be in vain. I must touch him. I must touch the throne. I must touch reality. You will answer my cry today. You will answer my cry today. And as they came to Jesus. Now, follow me quickly to verse. You know, we're still in verse 30. What did they do? And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and did what? And told him how many things? All things. Look at, look at it. And they told him all things. Both what they had done and what they had taught. It was a very interesting passage for me to see that when they came, they told him all things. God will give you opportunity during this congress to talk to Jesus about all things. Eh? It is not always every time that you have this opportunity. I can imagine that when you are on campus among your students, even if a student preached or a fellow lecturer preached and you were so touched as a lecturer, did you have courage to go to the altar and kneel down while the student was conducting? Talk to me. No. No. Honestly speaking, it's against protocol. Even though you have issues to settle with God, but protocol will not allow you. How can you be crying in front of students? How can you confess anything before students? Will they not be laughing at you? Some students will just say, ah, 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 Reverend Dr. So, ah, you see how he's crying. <laughs> so because you are conscious of students, you are conscious of the environment, you never told him all things. And even if prayer was still going on and people are needing to sort their lives out with God, somebody will announce and say, uh, let's give honor to whom honor is due. Let all our lecturers leave while the student wait. What are they saying to you? Even if you have not finished talking to Jesus, they are saying, lecturers, please now go. They thought they are honoring you. We have been over honored into problems. Where we needed to settle our case with the master. We would not have space. So as far as I could see God. He's bringing us to a place where. If you came out here. And you said Lord. I will not let you go. Unless you change my story. I will not let you go. Until this problem is removed. I will not let you go. Until you change, when you change that problem. That sin. That problem. Ah God. I must not leave Boko. I must bury it here. Even if you are needing it there and crying. Nobody. Will laugh at you. We are colleagues. And we are facing common challenges. The enemy that is your enemy is my own enemy. Are you hearing me? Eh? The temptation that is facing you as a man of God is the temptation that is facing me. We have a common battle. So if you are crying to God, how will I, why, why will I, will anybody sit back and ridicule you when he himself has the same issue to grapple with? So here, they told him all things. You have come to a place where you can tell God all things. You have come to a place where if you want to cry in the bush, walk out and say, God, I have come here. Though I'm a theological educator, I've been teaching this course, but this course has not helped my life. I need help. 
And sometimes, even if you decide that you will go to church, you want to attend the chapel, or you want to go outside to go and attend another local church, can I see the problem? As you are arriving, the pastor there, as soon as he cites you, he said, oh, we thank God, uh, Reverend Dr. Samuel has arrived. He is a specialist in a uh, uh, pneumatology <laughs> and uh, uh, today is the uh, uh, Sunday of Epiphany and we are looking particularly about the advent of the Holy Spirit. So when I finish this sermon, uh, Dr. Samuel will come and pray for us. Even there, they will not allow you to tell him all things that is happening to you. As you have come here, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, tell him all things. Is that okay? Tell him all things. All things that you have done and all things that you have been teaching. Let's bring ourselves and say, Lord, I have come to a place where I can be myself. Where I can turn to you and where I can allow you to see me through my challenges. And as they did, Jesus, I don't know whether you can see Jesus. I didn't think when he listened to them, he listened to them, it was so touching to me that Jesus was more passionate, not about marking them, Brothers, sisters, we have not come here for promotion examination. Eh? You know sometimes when you go and appear before the panel, you have to package yourself. You have to be careful how you dress because somebody is watching how to mark you down or mark you up. But I thank God that when they appear to Jesus, he wasn't marking them. He wasn't criticizing them. He listened to what they are going through. He listened to all they have done and all they have taught. And his response was noteworthy. What is his response? The master said, and he said unto them, Come! You yourselves, come, you yourselves apart into a desert place and rests a while. There are several issues in that little Bible verse. But because tonight is just an opening charge, I'm just going to run through them so that we can join hands together to pray. The first thing is come. What is the difference between come and go? Eh? If the master, and you know, the master could have said, go, you yourself, to a desert place, and do what? And rest. Would that also have been a correct statement? Eh? Go, that's your room there, go and rest. You know you can do that, and it will still have looked like a good thing, isn't it? But when he say, come, what does that mean? That means, even Jesus, himself is going to go with them. They are going to be there together. Jesus is not saying, you go and, go and rest, go and rest. He said, come. Me and you, come. You yourself, come. You yourself, come ye apart. Apart from where? Apart from all your activities. Apart from your regular routine. Apart from all the troubles of marking exams, marking term papers, and all of those things. Apart from all the challenges of, hey, we, you know, we need to, there's a student who is causing confusion, and we are meeting upon all of that. Come! I will be there. It's exciting to me that Jesus is already here. He is already waiting to take you into this solitary place. And what did he want? He said, come, 
You yourself apart. Why did he say you yourself? You yourself. You, 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 you yourself. Don't talk about someone else. Forget about others. We expected several other more people. But that's okay. If they have not arrived, it's okay. If they couldn't come, it's okay. You, you, yourself, come. Did you hear the invitation? You, yourself. It's not about someone else. It's about me. You, yourself, come you apart to a desert place. And is this not a desert place? Let me ask you. Is this not a desert place? Talk to me, please. I hope you know that this is not the road to anywhere. <laughs> Just know that. You can't say, as I'm going, we will branch in Broko. You can imagine that. This is not a place. It's not a passage to anywhere. And if you have not known, you will soon discover that you are just coming from Enugu, or you are coming from Ibadan, or you are coming from Obumasha, and you just landed in the midst of the bush, and they say, this is the place, and you branched in. Let me ask you, which, which city have you seen now? Even if you want to go to town, to Boko town, you need 21 kilometers to make it, and the road is not good. And some say, where are we now? Where are we? Where are we? You are in the midst of nowhere. You are in a desert. I'm sure when, uh, when Professor Fayomi said, my wife, you will follow me to that Boko. And as they started traveling, Mama, did you ask several questions? <laughs> when are we going to get there? What kind of place is this? Some, as they were coming, they saw round huts with a grass. Say, do people live in that one also? You mean people are there? Uh, you have not seen anything. You have just come into a desert. Why does God want you to come to a place where you will not be distracted? Where you can focus. It's only of recent that you can get GSM here. Some time ago, if you have MTN, you are, you are, just, you are just wasting your time. MTN will never connect for you here. Globe will never connect for you here. God will deliver you. Just for these three days, so don't worry. God said, come, you yourself into a solitary place. To do what? To rest a while. I love the scripture. To rest for a while. Which means there's a, 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 a duration, a short time that you are going to be here. Let's maximize it. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible gave a reason. Said for there were many coming and going to the point that they had no leisure so much as to eat. Can you imagine how busy they are that people are coming and going to, so, to such an extent that they do not have even leisure so much as to eat? No leisure. If I look at the typical life of a theological educator and I see some of you that are carrying several loads, maybe you are teaching philosophy for 100 level, philosophy for 200 level, 300 level. This is submitting project, this one is writing paper, another one is you have told him to go and do you know, book study and he has written and you need to mark it. And all of this. And then you yourself have to do research so that they can promote you. All of this, you have not so much a leisure to the point that even your personal quiet time, you just rush many times. You say, Look, I need I have a lecture now, I have a lecture now. 
Sometimes you and your wife, you are strangers. You say, oh, ma, madam, thank God, you know, I have to be in the class now. God bless you. Please take care of the children. And you're coming back 7, 8 p.m. Tired. Madam said, we have been waiting. Say, well, you know, you know, after the classes once, I'm dealing with another case. And all. It never finished. Come, you yourself, to this place and rest a while. You need leisure to eat. And you need to eat for your soul. You need to eat for your inner man. You need to, to, to say, Lord, now I need good, good message for my soul. Unfortunately, you see, even when you had somebody preaching in the school, unfortunately, I don't know what normally happens. As you sat there, you are too sensitive that he didn't quote this reference properly. Wrong, <laughs> wrong reference. And then, uh, how, how, what kind of thing is this? And see how he presented the message without a focus, without a title. What is the meaning of this now? Eh? What is it now? So instead of you to get edified, you are preoccupied with what? With marking even the student, marking the preacher, is is a trouble for those of us who are in theological education. We don't have a place where we can be edified. Our mind had been so 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 overstretched that we could not. If somebody speaks bad English, you say, "What is the meaning of this?" Now? If you quote a passage, your head say. Actually, the Greek, the Greek rendering of that Bible verse is not exactly like that. You see now, you see your problem. When will you sit down and eat? When will you swallow something for your own soul? How long can you do this? And you will not run dry. So this night... While I welcome you, I welcome you to Jesus. I welcome you to him whose hem of his garment had sufficient virtue to meet every need. I welcome you to him in a desert where nobody else is looking at you. Where you can undress and say, Lord, if I had to travel all the way from Umaya to come to this place, I took all the risk. I can't go back the way I came. Do something new with me. If I had to go all the way, oh my God, when I saw the people from Ogumasha, uh, I knew where they, the trouble. I knew the tortuous road that they took. If they went through Ilori and they went through Ofa and they are coming, oh my God. And then they have to go back to Ikiti and then come and now face that bad portion of road in Okini where your car will just sink like this and you don't know how to come out. And you are here. I don't want you to go home and tell your wife and say, well, where we went? The road is bad. If you only went to report the road, <laughs> you missed the point. You have missed the point. I wish you would say to God, having brought me, feed me till I want no more. Satisfy the longing of my heart. That's why I went to start with that Psalm 20 to pray. That God will remember the labor and your sacrifices. And that the Lord will respond to the desire of your heart. And that the Lord, the Lord, the Lord himself, we meet all the cry of your heart and it will remember you. So as we will call on God this morning, I mean this evening, just to go and wait and sleep and eat and whatever you need to do, will you please make a response and say, Jesus, I have arrived. I have come. And thank you, Lord, that I have colleagues we have common challenges. But I know you know my case. You know my life. I have come. Lord, I have come.
Tonight, my father, I have come. Take note of me, O God. While you are touching others, while you are blessing others, don't pass me by. I am coming tired, exhausted. I am coming overwhelmed. But I want to go back refreshed. Feed me till I want no more. Will you like to please rise and let us call on God together. Let us respond to him and say, Jesus, I have come. Unto you, who is able to do much more than I could ever think or imagine, I have come. Unto you, who understands even the unspoken cries of my heart, I have come. Unto you, who knows all about my struggle, to you, Lord, I have come. And I have come first myself apart. I have come. Do not overlook my case. As you helped the woman with the short blood, help my own case as well. Just do something new for me. As we sleep in the midst of all the brothers and sisters, Please call on God. Cry to God. This coming is a coming to Jesus. And it must not be a waste. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Our chairman said, even if you find that, yes, you started as a very fervent spiritual person. But as you went into higher theology, something has affected your inner man. Your simplicity of believing the word of God has changed. You've caught a strange spirit that has robbed you of the simplicity of faith the simplicity of encountering God and you are dry. You may be standing and you are even doubting the very tenets of our faith. There are too many higher questions, higher criticisms that has robbed and made you dry. Would you like to pray and say, Lord, I have come. There are many coming and going so much that there's not even a leisure to eat. And I hear Jesus say, come, come, you yourself, come. Please call on God. For this next few minutes, please call and say, Lord, I am here. Don't allow me to go empty-handed. Holy Spirit, for the next three days, Today, tomorrow, Saturday, do something new with me. Re-engage my vision. Sharpen my implement. Bring something fresh onto my heart. Minister to my exhaustion. Inject freshness onto my spirit. Tonight I'm here. Even though this meeting, we are talking about general, many, many important, big, big, big things. But you, your personal need for God to touch you, to release virtue to you, There's no faculty board meeting where you can table it. It will look like digression. So you have always kept it alone. Some of us, we don't have prayer partners again. Because we are overwhelmed. This night, tell him everything. Tell him everything. The hymn writer said, tell him everything. Jesus knows 
all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about your own struggles. And he will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. As we are praying tonight, did you just feel that I have arrived? Let me go and cast this matter at the feet of the Lord. Let me just go to that altar this night and say, Lord, I have not had an altar where I could cast my heart for a long time. Sometimes when you moved in me, I have nowhere to share. I couldn't cry out. I have to hold myself back because students are everywhere around me. This evening, Lord, I release myself. I want to touch the hem of your garment. Is there somebody there this morning, this moment who need to take a step of faith and say, Lord, at last I've come to where my heart is longing for help. I want you to touch my life. Even if it is a secret addiction, something that you are ashamed to talk about, Jesus knows it. And say, come, you yourself to a desert place and rest a while. I know you've not been having leisure to eat. I know, I know. I know this, you are famished because nobody is taking care of you. Come, you yourself apart. I dare now ask if you sense you want to just come to the altar before God this night. And you want to say, Lord, as simple as this message is, my life first. My life first. My heart first. My inner man first. Do something new for me. If you want to come, please come. Just come. Just come. When Jesus says, somebody touch me. Even if it be you stretching for that hand of faith to connect with the Savior. Please come. He will declare you free. He will do something new for you. He will change your story. The tears you couldn't shed before men. If you shed it before him, he will not ridicule you. He understands. Thank you. God bless you. Somebody still needs to come and say, Lord, tonight, tonight, in this place, let me settle this matter. Let me settle this matter. Have you been eating deep with a kind of bitterness and unresolved issue? The way you were treated had made you to be so embittered and you don't know where to come out from. The master says, come, you yourself apart. I'm here. I'm going to be with you. Come. God bless you. Somebody still need to come. Thank you, sir. Just come. Let this night mark that beginning. Just come. As your ministry in the theological schools, as it become dry and dreary. Have you come to a point where you don't know what to do again? It has just become something. You just say, okay, let me just continue since I don't know where else. It's as if I've been punished to be sent there. Lord, I am coming to you. Thank you. Somebody still need to come? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggles. Hey, we got my day is done 
There is not a friend like the Holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. We know. We know the challenges. But God is saying, come. And if you are still in between and you think, ah, let me just go. Please join us while we pray. And as Baba prays, can you all stretch forth your hand to God and say, Lord, we have come. Help us. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. We honor you. We magnify your name. We thank you for this evening. We thank you because of who we are to you. And who you are to us. We thank you for the safe travel. We thank you for what we have heard from your word. We thank you for the response. We thank you for these servants of yours that are kneeling before you. Holy Father, you know them. You love them. You want to use them. We thank you because they have responded. We thank you because they know who you are to them. And who they are to you. Accept their yearning. Give them the rest that comes from you. They are here. You have called them to rest at your feet. Release them, O oh Lord, from what is holding them back from being used as true theological educators whom you have called. Lord, free them that their coming here will not be in vain. Holy Father, grant them your peace which passes all understanding. Grant them your grace which is beyond bound our Lord and our God. They are your instruments for greater exploit in this land. Use them. Not for who they are, but because of who you are in their lives. For what you have planned in them long ago to use them for the expansion of your kingdom. Free them. For your service. Not for their own service. Not for their own well-being. But for your service. For your honor. For your people. The rest of us, O oh Lord. is not what we are 100%. We thank you because you have been using us. And we ask, O oh Lord, as we are here all before you, may we bring our hearts before you. May we open our ears to hear you. Not us, but you in us. So that we will not go back the same. So that we will go back better, servants, Better educators to build those students you have put in our church. To strengthen those students. To impact those students. Not by our theological knowledge, but by our lives. Change lives. For the building of your kingdom in this country. That is being tormented by the evil one. Not by our power. 
but by your power. So Lord, bless these servants of yours kneeling. Answer them and use them and use all of us. Hear us. Not because of anything, but because of your promise. Because you have invited us. Here we are. Feel us. For your name's sake. Through Christ Jesus our Lord.